Hi, I'm Abdul and welcome to this tutorial from Vonage. This video will cover how to make a call to a phone number with an iOS application using the Vonage Client SDK for iOS and Swift. When placing a call for the SDK, it makes a HTTP call to a URL that has the information needed to handle the call. We call this the answer URL. You will use Express and Node.js to set up your answer URL. To follow along with this video, you will need a Vonage account, Node.js and Xcode installed, as well as the Vonage CLI. When an inbound call is received, Vonage makes a request to a publicly accessible URL of your choice. We call this the answer URL. You will need to create a webhook server that is capable of receiving this request and returning an NCCO. An NCCO is a JSON array that you use to control the flow of a call. Create a new project directory and change into it. Inside this directory, initialize a new Node.js project by running npm init y. Next, install the Node.js dependencies that we will be using by running npm install express local tunnel dash dash save. Create a new file called server.js and open it in your code editor. Start off by defining some constants for use later and setting up express. Next, define the route for the answer URL. This route will return an NCCO with a talk action followed by a connect action. The connect action will connect the iOS app to a phone number endpoint. The phone number is in the body of the HTTP call from Vonage to your server. After that, define the route for our event callbacks and log the incoming events to the console. Finally, set up local tunnel to allow your local server to be accessible to the internet. Be sure to replace the existing subdomain constant with a unique string. Return to the terminal and start the server by running node server.js. Now it's time to create a Vonage application. In your project folder, run the apps create command to create application. Name it and specify the event URL and voice answer URL from the webhook server you just created. As you can see, a private key has been generated for you and you have been given an application ID. Keep a note of these as you will need them later. Users are a key concept when working with the Vonage Client SDKs. When a user authenticates with a Client SDK, the credentials provided identify them as a specific user. Run Vonage Apps Users Create Alice. This will create a user with the username Alice for your application. The Client SDK uses JWTs for authentication. The JWT identifies the username, the associated application ID, and the permissions granted to the user. It is signed using your private key to prove that it's a valid token. Run the JWT generate command, which you can also find in the link in the description. It uses the private key, username, and application ID from earlier, along with access control lists or ACLs to generate a JWT for the specified user. For this project, you will need a Vonage number. You can view the numbers you own using the Vonage numbers command. If you want to buy a new number, you can search for one then use the Vonage numbers buy command to buy it. Before we move on, use the apps link command to link the number from earlier to your new application. Now it's time to create the project. Open Xcode and create a new project. Select iOS for platform, then app for application type. Name your project, select Swift for a language and storyboard for the user interface. Now that your project is created, close it as you need to add the client SDK library via CocoaPods. Open the terminal and change directory into your project folder and run pod in it. This creates a pod file. Open the pod file and add Nexmo client as a dependency. Once done, run pod install. That will download the Nexmo client and add it to your project. Now open the XC workspace. As you will be using the microphone when making a call, you need to request permission to use it. To do so, open the info.ps file, which is a file that contains the metadata for your project and add a new entry. From the drop-down list, Pick Privacy, Microphone User's Description and add a description for its value. 
Next, open the app.delegate file and import AV Foundation. In the did finish launch image options function, request permissions by making a call to AV audio session. Also print out whether it has been granted or not to the terminal to help us debug if needed. If you build and run the project, you will now be asked to grant permission to the microphone. To place the call, you will have two elements on the screen, a label to show the connection of the app and the volume servers, as well as a button to start and end calls. Open the view controller file and add them programmatically. The call button has been hidden and its alpha is set to zero. It will be shown when a connection is established. Also, a target has been added for when the call button is tapped and will be used to place and end calls. Build and run and the label will be showing. Before you can place a call, the client SDK needs to authenticate with the Ronish service. Import Nextmore client in the view control file and create a local instance for the client. Now you can log in the client using the JWT you created earlier. Also set the delegate of the client to this class too. The delegate provides updates on changes that happen with calls so you will want to listen out for them. Create an extension for the NXM client delegate and a required function on the delegate is the did receive error function. This will update the status label if there is an error. There is no guarantee that the delegate functions will be called in the main thread, but since they are changing the UI, you call dispatch queue main async to ensure the changes are done in the main thread. And implement the did change status function, which will update the status label depending on the status of the client's connection to the Ronish service. If the client connects successfully, the call button will also become visible. If you build and run again, the status label will update to connected and the call button will become visible. Now you are ready to place a call. First declare a property in the class to hold reference to the call object. You will want to update the call button press function from earlier to either place a call or end a call depending on whether the local property is nil or not. Create a new function called place call which updates the button's title and uses the server call function. If there is an error, you want to update the label and reset the call button to its original state. Otherwise, set the call to your local variable so it does not get deallocated when the function exits. Next, create a new function that ends calls. It calls hang up, sets the local property to nil, and resets the button to its original state. Now if you build and run your app, you can place a call which will call the phone number specified. You can view the events from the call in your terminal window that is running the webhook server. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or email devrel at vonish.com. To learn more about what you can do with the Vonish Client SDK for iOS, visit developer.nextmo.com forward slash client SDK.